Coach, can you just start us out with your general take on, on this game for you guys? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious we were giving away serious, uh, some serious numbers on, on pounds and inches. <laughs> and so, um, so we had to make up for it with, you know, scrapping and pawn and, and trying to come up with possessions. And, and I was really pleased with how we did with the possession battle. I think, unfortunately, the, the things that cost us was we gave them too many easy shots. If they, if they weren't able to get the breakaways, if they weren't able to get, you know, the, the putbacks, um, they had a hard time scoring. And we felt good about that, but those, those were the things that, you know, we knew would be tough because of, because of how big they are, how long they are, uh, when it comes time to try to score against them, and so passes to get through against regular teams you know, don't get through against kids of that size and 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 the fact that we knew it would be very tough for us to score around the rim even though I thought we did get to the rim pretty well we picked and chose our spots really well to get to the rim and um, and so the so the things that cost us the game were things that it would be hard it was going to be very hard for us to do a whole lot better than what we did as I said that offensive rebound put backs the turnovers led to layups um, but I thought every other aspect of the game we played as well um, you know, and maybe even outplayed him in some areas of the game. For Raleigh, you were able to have success against Tennessee despite that size. Just what were the reasons for your for your ability to score so well for your team today? Um, I think it was just like Coach and I just talked about, like the controlling the tempo and taking good shots and we were that open and so it was just knocking down those shots when we were open and um, we had to we had to move the ball and we knew that we kind of had to, we had to play fearless and go at them and attack them and that's what we did and we had a lot of success with it. Bradley has great instincts for the rim. She just knows where the rim is and so a lot of times she's deceptive because you don't realize that she has that much awareness of the rim. You don't realize she's about to score um, so I thought she, you know, really played well, and it was just great to see her have such a good game as we get ready to go into conference. Because Riley's a heck of a player. Yeah, for Riley, if I'm correct, <coughs> you were just a couple points off your career high today. Uh, so how did you get that going against a team that, as your coach said, had a lot of pounds and inches on y'all? Um, I, I knew that they were going to be longer and bigger, so. It was just like having my feet set and being ready to shoot the ball when I was open. And then we had to go at their bodies and attack them to draw the fouls and stuff. So I just kind of tried to create off of that. Coach, when, when you're scouting Tennessee, obviously Renaya Davis is the best player coming back from last season. But when you're looking at Tennessee, who else is, who else gets your attention on film right now? Because we're uh, this is a new team for, for Tennessee. Everybody's trying to get to know them right now. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, they all get my attention. <laughs> um, I mean, I was just, <coughs> as I watched film, it was even hard to keep track of just, you know, one more big body after another just going into the game. Um, obviously, uh, they're, they're very dependent on 25, and and um, you know they've got her out there as their lead defender, and and uh, and I think she's probably got the most versatile game. Um, that that size is just I, I we've played against Oregon, we've played against you know Arizona State, we've played against a lot of other teams. I've never seen that much size. That's just one big kid after another coming coming into the game, and so it's almost like. Don't even know. I finally told him, you know, you you get you get the big kid on the left, you get the big kid on the right. It wasn't even like, you know, you get 21, you get 11, whatever. Uh, so, but they, you know, they, they could be a, they could be an exceptionally good defensive team, and I really think that's what they need to hang their hat on. Um, I think they've got some some challenges um, in terms of you know a lot of their offensive skills and whatnot. They could just be so good with that kind of size uh, to protect the rim and, and, and that kind of um, length and athleticism on the perimeter. They could just really be good. And I, I hope they buy into that. You know, I really hope they buy into that. I think they got enough offensive firepower, um, but I don't think it's exceptional. And I think that's what they have to, 
don't hang your hat on. Riley, the shot clock violations, was that part of the length of Tennessee? I know you guys probably wanted to work deep in the clock, but did that length sometimes just make it too hard to get to get that deep in the shot clock? Yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, when our offense kind of stalled a bit, it was tough. And we talked about early um, before the game not turning the ball over. And so we would rather have those shot clock violations instead of turning the ball over and then them just getting – a transition because I mean they're great in transition so we would much rather eat it and like have that shot clock violation instead of just turning the ball over but it I mean it was due to their length they're big, they're big. I mean you got to get your shot off when you're open so. Chris how did this game get scheduled did you call them or did they call you well we called them because we have a player just an outstanding young lady in our program by the name of Sarah Pierce, who's from Tennessee. And she has really been through it. Um, just a terrific leader, really the best shooter on our team. Got the best pure shot on the team. And she had battled back from two ACLs, was in great shape, playing really good basketball, and did a third ACL in the preseason. And so Sarah didn't, didn't suit up. But if there's anybody that I'd be more than happy to still go to her hometown. Um, it would be Sarah Pierce. So she's just continued to be, to inspire our team and lead our team, even though she hasn't played hardly any minutes. Uh, and she's gonna be a great officer in our Air Force. She all should be very happy to know she's gonna be in charge of uh, your country's uh, defense. <laughs> and just to clarify, Sarah did get to travel. She's with here, the team. Okay. Yes. yeah, she was sitting on the Bench. And then, obviously, you've been around this game a long time. Still coming to Tennessee, the summit floor. Does that does that still resonate with the team to, to visit here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a, what a terrific experience. I think that you know part of what our challenge is uh, being the Air Force Academy is our, our world is really big. In the world that these guys have to be paying attention to and dialed into is much, much bigger than women's basketball. Um, and so unlike a regular university where your students spend, you know, the majority of their focus, their time, their energy is on their basketball, and then, you know, I'm not saying they don't go to class and all that, but, you know, let's face it, it's, it's about, it's about the, being in that gym. And, and these guys uh, have massive things they have to track. They spend their summers uh, going around, going to different places around the world or around the country, and and doing different training programs and different leadership programs and whatnot. So it's kind of fun every now and then. It's just fun to come back in and, and realize, hey, this is this is something that they love. They love their sport, they love their game. And it's really fun to do it in a place where it's super appreciated <coughs> and where there's a very rich tradition and sort of be reminded that it's, at least for the basketball part of their life, it doesn't get any better than this. And that's a fun experience for them. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.